It's a Thursday, October 13, 2022. This Day Weather Podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out on their Facebook page or go to CowboyStateDaily.com. Not much happening uh, as we go through the rest of this week and into the weekend. We will have some windy areas. This will be especially true for western areas of South Dakota, Nebraska, far eastern Wyoming. The winds aloft are still pretty stout, so there's going to still be some wind. A little warmer conditions on Friday. Then we've got this weak backdoor cold front on Friday that will slide in out of Montana and the Dakotas, kind of southwest into the region. It won't produce much weather. A little bit, not much. All the real bad weather is going to head towards the Great Lakes in the Midwest. We have a long stretch of quiet weather coming Sunday through next Friday. Between the end of this weekend and through all of next week, we're just in the doldrums. The weather pattern is stuck. We'll have a big, low, big low pressure system in the east part of the U.S. The western United States will be under a big ridge of high pressure. It's going to take seven to nine days for that pattern to get unstuck. And when it does, we're still expecting changes in the long term that will probably be pretty dramatic a lot colder and wetter sometime once this pattern breaks but until that log jam breaks we're just going to coast along here with what has been really a really nice october and it's going to continue to be that way nice for a little bit longer more photos coming in now today's theme is you don't have to go to the mountains to see great fall colors and got some Folks who have submitted photos from being in town, not out of town, and that's really true. With the lack of a big snowstorm this month so far, we've been able to keep the leaves, even with the wind here recently, in town. So great colors showing out. Great shot there from Wendy of the Capitol building. And then Trent Morrill out uh, North Cheyenne saw some great colors yesterday evening. And then look at these colors in Gillette. Wow, those are incredible colors especially with that blue sky in the background so yes the mountain colors are great but you can stay in town and enjoy them as well or you can go out of town and see scenes like this near Glen Rock wow great shot there and then all the way from Idaho thanks Sherry for setting this great to hear from folks across the west great shot there out of the sawtooth of changing fall colors there so don't forget to send those colored pictures to podcast at dayweather.com Today's satellite imagery, you can see the swirl of the upper level low that is right here in the upper Midwest and south central areas of Canada. And you can see the impressive circulation around this low. It's a big system. And these clouds and these streaks here are the counterclockwise flow of air and moisture around it. And that's why these upper level winds are going to keep things breezy in this area here. You can see how impressive that low is. It's Got a lot of black lines stacked together, so there's a steep pressure gradient, and that's why in this area right here, northwest winds aloft will make things a little bit breezy. And you can see where the winds are going to be gusty today. Strongest out here in the Dakotas, western Nebraska, eastern Wyoming. Going to have some wind gusts 40, 50 miles an hour or so. Kind of pesky gusty winds will be noted elsewhere. This is where the cold's going to be. This is by next Tuesday. Look at all the cold that is getting pushed into the nation's midsection and the east. Look how warm it is in the west. So we have kind of a dipole situation. Warm and cold right next to each other and in between. That's where the in-between is going to be here in the coming days between the below average temperatures and the above average temperatures. So if you want some real fall weather, that's where you want to go. And look at the snow forecast. This is over the next 10 days. Look at the snow in lower Michigan, upper Michigan, across parts of Ontario and Quebec there, then even into the lee of the Great Lakes, into the Appalachians. Potentially the first snow of the season, probably we'll see it. Out here, this is all we've got going on. This will be from that cold front that backdoors into the area on Saturday. There's just going to be a push of colder air from that low this way, and that may produce a little bit of shower activity. We still have an upper level low down here, pumping up subtropical moisture. So Arizona and New Mexico continuing to get more rainfall. I'm going to talk about this part of the country tomorrow and how it's been over the last four months. It's really the most unreported weather story of the year so far. When you take a look at snowfall out west, well, that front will produce some high elevation snow showers and flurries, and that'll be about all. 
This is by next Tuesday. The deep low there is over Lake Erie, Lake Ontario there, western New York, while just this big dome of high pressure, strong high pressures over the Rocky Mountain West. The end result will be some very, very nice weather. Now, it's not going to be too warm, though, because the winds aloft are coming in basically from the north-northwest. So that'll keep temperatures from getting too warm relative to averages. This is where the cold will be. These are forecasted low temperatures by next Tuesday night into Wednesday of next week. This is record cold, potential record cold in this part of the country here, the Corn Belt going to likely be having freezing temperatures next week. Let's go back to that long range forecast. We've been showing you those strong jet stream winds and we've been saying that as long as we see the models forecasting this very powerful jet stream wind off the Aleutians and across the North Pacific that this is going to be a harbinger, a signal of a larger change later on and it's still there partially driven by these sea surface temperature anomalies. Look at this, this is actually quite remarkable. We have this intense, huge area of colder than average sea surface temperatures along the equator here. There's your La Nina. These are remarkably cool subtropical sea surface temperatures. Reverse that though, and we have above average sea surface temperatures. Now the water up here isn't really warm, but it is warmer than the 30 year average. And that stretches across also the North Atlantic. So along the equator, temperatures are cooler than normal. As you go further north in higher latitudes, they're warmer than average. And you get a big contrast, a big temperature contrast between these areas here. And that's one reason why you get these strong jet stream winds, especially as you head towards the cold season. And as we have mentioned in other podcasts, when you have a warm pool here, you end up with temperatures and conditions favorable for high pressure to at times move in, cause the jet stream to buckle, and that's exactly what we see developing. This is by next Sunday. So if you're talking about when is the weather going to change, it's going to be late next weekend and into early the following week before that bigger change arrives. Have yourself a great Thursday. We'll talk to you on Friday.